We're so happy to be reunited with our Giving Tuesday friends. Really excited about 2014, Giving Tuesday number three. And um, I don't know about you, but I've already fast forwarded into December. So if someone could help slow things down, that would be great. Just look outside. What's that? Just look outside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it looks like December already. So um, we're here. my name is Zane Habu, and I run digital media and multimedia strategy at the UN Foundation. I'm honored to be a part of the Giving Tuesday team. And last year was my first year, and I'm completely hooked now. Um, I'm really, really excited to be here to talk about getting social, how to launch a creative Giving Tuesday strategy with literally the best team that anybody could ask for. And as I look across from me, I think we should call this the Fab Female Rally. Talking about it's rally. We're ready to rally. What is it? We're ready to rally. Yes, We're ready to it. rally. Yes, so that can fire be our up. hashtag for yeah. the summit. So um, it's my honor to introduce the team. I'm just going to very briefly go through the introductions. Um, and everybody's handles are up here, so feel free to live tweet. Um, we've got a really good uh, crew watching on live stream everywhere from Croatia to Canada to Chile to the UK. So just everybody keep tweeting in your questions and sending them in. Um, first, I have Lauren Van Horn here. Lauren works at Facebook on the strategic partnerships team. She's focused on nonprofits and causes, and she was a big help in Giving Tuesday this year. Welcome, Lauren. Um, next to Lauren, we have Susan McPherson. Susan is known as a serial connector, passionate cause marketer, angel investor, and corporate responsibility expert. You may also know her from her CSR chats on Twitter on every Tuesday, I believe. Is that right? Wednesdays. Wednesdays, I apologize. <laughs> and she also recently launched McPherson Strategies, which is a communications consulting group who work primarily on um, corporations and social good. We then have Mylan Pham, who is with the Camp Kesem Group. She's the marketing managing that manager there. And I believe last year was the first year you participated in Giving Tuesday, correct? So welcome. Um, Stephanie Starts, who leads the Michael J. Fox Foundation Social Strategy. And we were really excited to work with them last year on helping to take the unselfie into the Michael J. Fox Foundation crowd. And finally, we have Megan Stone, who's Vice President of Communications at the World Food World Food Program USA, working on special projects and, and many other very important things. So welcome, everybody. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, Lauren, I'm going to start with you and just ask how um, this year Facebook worked with celebrities or group to integrate their brands into Facebook and Instagram, their messaging, and how you thought that worked best with Giving Tuesday. Sure. Can everyone hear me? OK. Um, so one of the main ways that we've been able to work with public figures and nonprofits, um, so across multiple verticals, is to make sure that people know how to join the conversation on Facebook and Instagram. So there's a couple of ways that they can do that, right? They can make sure that when they're sharing about what they're doing for Giving Tuesday or simply talking about Giving Tuesday, that they're using the hashtag. Um, so hashtag Giving Tuesday. At the same time, maybe they're tagging the Giving Tuesday Facebook page, right? So that people who want to learn more about Giving Tuesday have a place to go. Um, another way that they can you know, join the conversation is by tagging each other or organizations. So a great example is Bill Gates wrote kind of a, a medium type narrative post about Giving Tuesday. So he explained to people on his Facebook page what Giving Tuesday is. He tagged the Giving Tuesday Facebook page. He used the hashtag. He also tagged certain organizations that he you know, wanted to essentially highlight that he knows a little bit more about. But he still included a place for people to go to learn about all the organizations that were involved with Giving Tuesday. So um, basically, we work with people and organizations to make sure that they know that they can tag each other and use hashtags and make sure that they're really entering the conversation so that people can find these conversations and find these posts. So for instance, if I were to go to Facebook and I were to search hashtag Giving Tuesday, all the conversations where people are using that hashtag that are public, so you know any public figure or any page talking about it may appear there depending upon my specific news feed, um, as well as any of the posts from my friends who are talking about Giving Tuesday. So basically just working with them to make sure that they know our best practices and ways to enter the conversation. At the same time, um, we might do kind of a deeper type of partnership, but I'll let Megan talk to that, um, 
where we do something more hands-on and more involved at Facebook to, to get a little bit more involved. That's great, thank you. So um, jumping over to Megan, um, can you actually sort of carry on what Lauren was saying and talk to us about Lauren Bush Lauren, her participation in Giving Tuesday this year and how that came about and then also how you worked with Facebook on that? Sure, so I'm wearing my, my feed shirt proudly. I have my <laughs> flair, my feed flair. Um, so Lauren Bush Lauren's one of our WFP ambassadors against hunger and I think a lot of folks know her because of her feed work and she's just an awesome um, woman leading, I would say, an advocate. And so Lauren, the other Lauren, we had double Lauren domination <laughs> on Giving Tuesday. We took Lauren Bush Lauren to sit with Lauren Van Horn at Facebook and they sat down and did an interview together that they promoted across the service and drove a lot of traffic to us. And we saw a 400% increase in giving um, around Giving Tuesday, which to us was an awesome you know, thing to see, you know, real metrics, not vanity metrics, real metrics that we saw online. And for us, it was super important. I'm wearing my Feed Philippines shirt because Giving Tuesday last year just happened to fall about three and a half weeks after the typhoon hit. You know, and I think we all know that the American public can care really deeply for a short amount of time. And then sometimes it's harder to sustain their attention. So for us, Giving Tuesday and sitting with Lauren at Facebook and getting the message out was really critical because it's at that moment where the attention was starting to wane, but it didn't because we had tools like Giving Tuesday to keep pushing ahead. And as a result, we had the biggest November and December we've ever had online as an organization. So to us, it was a really critical part of our push. That's great. Very impressive. Thank you. Um, Mylan, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit of how you at Camp Kesem activated your community to participate in last year's Giving Tuesday and what actually worked best for you. Sure, okay. So Camp Kesem provides a peer support network for kids whose parents have cancer anchored in student-run camps led by college students across the country. So we have 54 camps in 27 different states, all led by a group of college students who are probably more social media savvy than I am. Um, so the best way that we activated our network through our college students is actually by creating student toolkits that we introduced to them at our national leadership leadership summit in November, which falls about a month before Giving Tuesday. So we, for Camp Kesem, it was really important that we activated our networks early and started planning for Giving Tuesday early so that we could build toolkits and give them to our students um, and prep them so that we can all have a united voice on Giving Tuesday. Um, can you just elaborate a little more about these toolkits? So this was obviously part of your strategy, think about how you were going to get the message out. Um, just so everybody can use this information to learn for this coming year, can you tell us a little bit more about the toolkits? Of course. So what we did for Giving Tuesday this year is we had each of our college campuses put together photo booths on campus and ask their community and their fellow students to come by the photo booth, take a picture, post it on social media, and invite their friends to also then give back on Giving Tuesday. So our toolkits involved tweets leading up to Giving Tuesday that they can use to promote. And then they also included props for the photo booth that we wanted to give them so that we could all have a united message um, across the country. So the props included a sign that said donate to Camp Kesem backslash the school's website. Um, the Giving Tuesday, and then our special hashtag, Big Kids Give, as well as a fun one, which was Carl, our caterpillar, which is our mascot. <laughs> um, so each school received a toolkit that had those signs, as well as suggested Facebook and Twitter posts and um, examples of what your photo booth could look like. That's great, thank you. So it's actually a pretty good segue into talking to Stephanie about the Michael J. Fox Foundation and how they um, took this idea of the unselfie, which is an unselfish selfie, and made it a thing, quote unquote, on the internet this year for giving, last year for Giving Tuesday. Can you tell us why you decided that was the strategy that you wanted to go with and how that worked for your audience? Sure, um, so Parkinson's disease is, um, you know, the purpose we're looking to cure Parkinson's disease at the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Um, and it's a condition that affects um, older adults. Average age of onset is 61. And we're always looking for ways to illustrate and share 
um, in a, our, our network's connection to Parkinson's. So if, if um, we can't engage with every single Parkinson's patient, we want to engage with their son or daughter, their wife or husband, um, the person who takes care of them, the person who provides um, health care for them or their grandchildren. And what we loved about the Unselfie was that um, it was a great way to show what that person with Parkinson's was going through and what the family was, you know, in some cases, the families um, shared that they wanted to save their family game night. They wanted to be able to play wiffle ball with their dad. They wanted all of the family's grandchildren to experience um, family vacations with their grandfather. Um, and we, I think I stopped what I was doing midway um, when I saw the Unselfie campaign and um, just threw it aside and jumped headfirst into Unselfie and shared it with our community. We were prepared to kind of put it out with our influencers, see what they would do with it, but it was an immediate response from our community. They um, took it and ran with it. We uh, saw people who had never engaged with the foundation on Twitter, or Facebook, and Instagram immediately respond to the Unselfie. Um, my favorite was uh, this family of like four or five sisters. They each unselfied out, unselfied each other. They they just <laughs> kept sharing photos. They kept submitting pictures with their dad. Um, it was great. It was terrific. That's great. And I think um, we saw that there were over 7,000 unselfies posted, and these were just the ones with the hashtag alone. So um, I think a pretty impressive campaign. And extra interesting, because you typically think of very young people taking selfies and grabbing onto this idea. And the fact that you were able to branch several generations mm -hmm. made it a, a sort of a surprise for everybody. Yeah. Um, Susan. So you have a tough job because you have to talk to big companies and get them to work on this idea of social good. And also important to note that I think you've been working on Giving Tuesday. This is your third year coming into Giving Tuesday. And um, so you have a lot of experience from both a communications and a Giving <laughs> Tuesday and a social good perspective. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about how you personally talk to corporations and how you help them think about what their social media or, or uh, their communication strategy should be for Giving Tuesday? Um, well, first I just have to say um, this all began, or my involvement um, kind of came into fruition back at the Rio Plus 20 Summit down in Brazil a few years ago. And uh, Henry Timms and Aaron Shrinian cornered me and said, you know, we have this, we're plotting, we have this great idea, we're rolling forward, we want you to be involved. And quite frankly, if the two of them asked me to walk off a bridge, I probably would. <laughs> uh, and I think many of you in the room would agree. Um, I also, it would be, re I'd be remiss if I didn't um, cite and, and ask her to stand, my partner in crime, Kate Sheridan, who is, I think, in the fifth row hiding, um, who worked who, who worked hand in hand with me this past year uh, to help bring corporations on board and, and really take an active role in Giving Tuesday. Um, two years ago when, uh, or almost three years ago now, when the effort began, Loads and loads of nonprofits came on board, and, and incredible nonprofits like the ones you're, you're, you're hearing about this morning. Um, it was a little harder to bring on corporations, only because I think when something is presented to a company and there's no cost at all, there's this question of, well, wait a minute, what am I going to pay for this? Mm -hmm. And once you get over that hurdle, then they, it was like crack cocaine, I guess. <laughs> bad, bad analogy. But nevertheless. <laughs> We're at a rally. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Yes, we're all friends. Rally. What stays in this room stays in the room. No, actually, um, once we talked in deep, deep discussions with a variety of companies, mainly consumer-facing companies to begin with, that had a vested interest in social good. And believe it or not, there are thousands of companies out there that are now realizing how important it is to connect with their customers, to connect with their stakeholders, their shareholders, their employees through efforts such as Giving Tuesday. And what Giving Tuesday did for these companies is it gave them a platform that they could adapt to their own organization, to their own efforts, and it gave them something that they could get their employees behind. And that was the secret sauce. Um, companies now are grappling with this whole idea of employee engagement, and if you hand them something with a template that they can run with, it, it was magic. Um, and companies such as Google and Home Depot and 
American Eagle Outfitters, um, j and J. I I mean, I could name on and on and on, but these companies came on board, and each of them had unique offerings. Uh, Google put together the first donatable Google, um, what are they called? Google Hangouts. Hangouts. Hello, I should know this. I do them. <laughs> um, Google Hangouts, where people could come on board and participate and donate a dollar. Uh, American Eagle, um, ed, for every purchase on their uh, e-commerce platform, they donated a dollar to Teach for America. Um, you just heard the, the Facebook and World Food Program, how they engaged. So the beautiful thing is, is we gave them just enough to let them go and run with it. Um, and if you go up to the givingtuesday.org site, you will see numerous examples. And I encourage any of you in the room that have friends, families, relatives who work at companies, spread the word, because this is a great opportunity for companies to get involved, both from a social as well as in the actual workplace. It can be both. It doesn't have to be virtual. That's great, thank you. So I think one of the biggest learnings for us about Giving Tuesday and when you're creating your, your strategies around what you're going to do for Giving Tuesday is the idea that this is a very decentralized concept, Giving Tuesday, and normally we would tell people go with one strategy. And in this case, what I think we found is it's okay for everyone to come up with really creative strategies as long as we're all talking to each other and making sure that we're finding out who our friends are and how we can learn the best practices and tips and tricks from them. So um, nice segue into uh, wrapping this up by having everyone on the panel um, talk about what maybe if you had one tip to leave for people um, as we think about 2014, um, what would that be for this year's Giving Tuesday? Lauren, if you could kick us off. One tip. Um, I'm going to say join the conversation in some way and in your own way, Great. whatever that means. And then I believe on the Nonprofits for Facebook page, there's an area with resources and FAQs, right, that's helpful, at least for me. Yes. We actually put together a Giving Tuesday guide for this past year, and it's on that Facebook page. But I can also send that to anyone who's interested in taking a look. That's great. Thank you. Susan? Um, I think let's think about how we can make Giving Tuesday every day. I love that. I would say start early, especially if you're working with college students. Yes, definitely start now. And also, um, I would highly recommend using the tools that GivingTuesday.org provides mm -hmm. so that we can all be under a one unified message. Great, thank you. Okay. I'd suggest um, trying to incorporate it throughout the entire organization. You know, I wear the social hat, but how do we spread this to um, newsletter communications? How do we spread it to research um, at the foundation? How do we spread it outside of a silo and social mm -hmm. to what we talk about every year, every day? Great. I have two, is that okay? Absolutely. Um, the first thing I'd say is just, um, your, what, this might be a nice inflection point internally for all of you to go to the powers that be to control your budgets and ask to upgrade your giving experience online because all the promotion in the world on social, if you lose them at conversion because they go to an old school website or the giving experience or whatever action, maybe it's an advocacy action you're asking for falls down, you know, all this energy is for naught, you know, and I can just speak from us. Um, for WPUSA, we redid our website, um, you know, in the fall of last year and our conversion went through the roof so you know we can do a lot in terms of marketing and social media but if the UI side of the experience for the people you want to win hearts and minds from is, is not as strong as it could be you know use this as a convening moment to go to the the ones that control your budget internally and say let's invest now so that our Giving Tuesday is amazing and we can show real results um, and the other thing would be just the online and offline um, connection which I think was so great about what you did because it's like sometimes we get so focused on what's happening online you know and I think that sweet spot we find more and more in digital organizing is when the two worlds collide you know, when it's online energy and then people are doing real stuff in their communities to marry up with it. So I would encourage that. And one last one <laughs> is pick your five dream partners and go ask them to do Giving Tuesday with you because sometimes these convening moments, people that won't return your calls as a nice, well-meaning nonprofit person, they return your call. So I would just encourage you to think of five people, your dream partners, and just contact them. And you might be surprised who might say yes because it's such a winning concept. So go after, go after the dream partners. Don't hold back. That is great. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, questions, Chrisula? How can you not answer a woman who has a bright yellow? <laughs> Uh, Chrisula Weiniger speaking, and I thank you so much. You're all, I, all, I admire all of you so greatly. So um, thrilled to learn a little bit more from you. Susan, I wanted to 
to follow up on the one point that you made about making Giving Tuesday last all year. And I'd love to hear from any of the panel, but perhaps to start with you on that thought. And, uh, and secondly, just to, um, I loved the idea that you talked about of employee engagement, and I think that that's a really underutilized uh, opportunity that the entire sector has available to it. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to expand a little bit more on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll first take the employee engagement, and obviously these women are all extraordinarily talented. Um, I do a lot of fundraising on behalf of nonprofits, and increasingly companies are reticent of donating or funding unless there is an employee engagement component to the actual program. And in some cases, some nonprofits, it's a challenge because perhaps they operate in a country where it's very difficult to go visit maybe in North Korea or Afghanistan or, or some of these more conflict-ridden um, uh, places. So therefore, with Giving Tuesday, you are giving ways to the company, you're giving them programs where individuals can be um, uh, activated, so to speak, to do fundraising, to share, to sign up. And, and these are actual things that, that make people engaged. And we all know that an engaged employee is a more productive employee, so hence the kind of complete circle. So I think that this, the entire Giving Tuesday platform is, is a gift to the HR departments of companies, to the CSR departments of companies. And then with regards to every day being Giving Tuesday, I, I mean that, I'm, I'm a realist, I'm, not, I'm an optimist and a realist, I'm not a pessimist. It's going to take time, and I think if you think back to the original ethos of what this was when it was when it's created, and I think all of us are givers, cares, compassionates. I mean, we just heard from from Lily Cole and, and the Impossible platform. It's making us more of a connected world, um, and giving and, and receiving is that connective community. So I think every year it's going to become more of this is every day. It's like, to quote my late mother, she always said on Mother's Day, every day is Mother's Day. So I think that's what we have to get to with 